joining us now, U of M professor Jonathan Hansen to help us answer some key questions on this historic day. Good morning, professor. Thank you for being with us today. Good morning, I'm glad to be here. First of all, at midday, President-elect Joseph R. Biden Jr. will be sworn in, and then he will lay out his vision for the next four years during his inaugural address. Many, of course, would argue that this is the most important speech of his life. He's given many of them. What are you anticipating? Well, first and foremost, I think he wants to send a message of unity. Uh, Americans have been more divided in the last four years than we've been in a long time. And the first thing that Biden would like to do is to try to bring us back together. He'll point to all the challenges that we face and he'll try to have Americans reach across to each other and send a message in which we can work together to address these challenges. Especially two weeks ago, having that riot in that exact location where the inauguration will take place. Definitely unity is something so many people want right now. The president-elect has promised a number of quick actions right after he's sworn in and gets busy to work. What can we expect? Well, there are a number of actions that he can take with executive order. Um, one of, uh, among those things will be changes to undo some policy initiatives of the Trump administration. Uh, for example, I think that we can expect him to uh, restore protections uh, to public lands that uh, the president uh, Trump has stripped away, that he will rejoin the Paris Climate Accords uh, and rejoin the World Health Organization. Um, another move we can expect is that he will stop using um, emergency funds from the Department of Defense to build the wall at the border. It's an action that we can expect also in his first day. Um, looking longer, we can expect some changes on immigration. Um, we think that he will um, stop the travel ban to majority Muslim countries, that he will reauthorize the DACA program for the Dreamers. Um, and then he's got a number of legislative changes that I think we'll also see him present before the Congress. Well, with less than six hours in office, President Trump still faces a second impeachment trial. Where does that process stand right now? And is there a, a likely outcome? Well, Republicans will be arguing that impeachment as the, at this point is irrelevant, that uh, you know Trump will have left office and that there's nothing further that we can do to him. Uh, Democrats, however, will be asking for accountability. Um, they'll make the argument that even, you know, that a Trump, uh, that a president shouldn't be able to do to just get away with whatever he wants to during the last couple of weeks of his office and not face accountability. And for Trump, that accountability means the ability to run again uh, for president should be taken away. Um, a lot, as for outcomes, a lot will depend on uh, what Mitch McConnell decides to do. Mm -hmm. He sent a signal that he may well support conviction of the president. And if he takes a leadership role in trying to push that forward, um, it might bring enough Republicans along with him to make that happen. We'll see what plays out. Professor Jonathan Hansen from the University of Michigan, thank you so much. Thank you.